Good evening, good evening, good evening everyone out there on Facebook Live. I'm glad to come to you for another great session of our Fair Repair Recovery uh, um, live broadcast. I am in a lobby of a hotel. Hopefully you can hear me okay and there's not a lot of background noise. But I wanted to spend a couple of minutes today. I wanted to remain committed to our time. I'm a few minutes off. But I wanted to talk to you today. We've been talking about the impact that affairs have on people's relationships. And I wanted to talk about a topic of authentic love versus affair love. I think that oftentimes when affairs occur and a partner discovers the affair, one of the first questions is, hey everybody, thanks for, for tuning in. One of the first questions is, well, did you love her? Or do you love her? Or do you love him? That somehow it's it's painful enough that an affair has occurred, but the emotional component on top of that makes it that much worse. That's why when people are comparing physical affairs to emotional affairs, the question is, which is more painful? Uh, and for many people, the emotional piece is a very, very difficult piece to kind of recover from because not only did you give that person your body, but you also gave them your heart, you gave them your soul, you gave them your mind, you gave them your emotions, and that's something hard to kind of bounce back from. And so I want to help you decode the difference between authentic love and a fair love because it's two entirely different things. Now, one of the things that we know, uh, according to the five love languages, when two people come together in a relationship, the first experience, emotional experience that they have is what we call the infatuation period. That is the in love feeling. And oftentimes when people are forming a relationship, they have that in love feeling where they're willing to do anything for their partner. They're willing to bend over backwards and to go to all ends of the earth for their partner because of this feeling and emotion that we have of love. But oftentimes, statistics would suggest that that in love feeling dissipates after two years. And then you transition into a different type of love. And so one of the things that couples struggle with is how come we don't have the passion? How come we don't have the infatuation, the in love feeling that we had when we first got in our relationship? Because a lot of that is associated with a feeling of newness. And that's one of the attractive things when it comes to an affair. Because this is new, because this is fresh, because this is different, all of a sudden I have emotions that I haven't felt in so many years with my partner and I kind of feel like you're my soulmate and you're able to compensate me in ways that my partner can't and that's the deception. Somehow we think that the grass is greener on the other side and oftentimes we give up 80% if you will of, of what we need for the 20% in the other person that we believe that we need. But it's all a deception. At the end of the day, what makes that affair partner so alluring is because we don't share hurts, we don't share pains, there haven't been past failures and disappointments and trials and tribulations that we experience. We don't share bills, we don't have responsibilities together. In essence, you represent an escape for me somewhere that I can go, someone that I can connect with that allows me to be free of responsibility, allows me to have that youthful feeling that I once had or, or that I felt when I was with my partner and I'm able to be with you in ways that I cannot be with my own partner. This must be love. But this is what we would identify as a fair love. And a fair love is very deceptive. It would make us think that it's authentic but it is not. And I want to clarify for you to let you know that love is more than a feeling. And I know that a lot of us hinge this concept of love on how we feel. So we get married because we fall in love. And many of us get divorced because we fall out of love. But love is a feeling, but it's that and a whole lot more. And so if you're in a truly committed, loving relationship, you have to understand that there are three components of love. Number one, we have the Eros love, which is that sensual, passionate, erotic, feeling-oriented love that makes us want to do anything for our partner. We want to spend all of our time together. We'll spend hours on the phone, falling asleep on the phone, just to be near, just to be close to our partner because we're in love. And that is the feeling of newness that we fear with an affair partner. However, there are other two types of love. Now, the question is, are you in love or did you fall in love with this partner you were having an affair with? Now, overwhelmingly, there is no love there. 
in rare situations where it's a long-term uh, relationship and affair, that love can develop over time, but statistically, most affairs only last for a few weeks to a few months. And within that period of time, there isn't enough uh, foundation to develop into what we will call authentic love. So it is just a feeling for the moment that begins to dissipate. But in a committed relationship, you have your arrows love, but then you transition into what we call um, phileo love, that is that brotherly, caring type of love. Now, one of the things that we've learned uh, in Fall in Love, Stay in Love, an awesome book written by Dr. Willard Harley, he said when you're in the caring love phase, there's two personalities that rise up within you. There's the giver and there's the taker. In the initial part of a relationship, your giver comes out. That is when you're willing to do anything for the person that makes them feel good, even if it makes you not feel so good, but you're willing to do it because you love them. But as a relationship begins to develop, oftentimes the taker rises up. The taker is that personality that says, I'm going to do whatever I need to do to make me feel good, even if it doesn't make you feel good. So the key is learning how to have a balance, a healthy balance between the giver and the taker so that caring love can manifest in the relationship. Now, a lot of couples who are no longer in the in love feeling have that caring love and that caring love is sustainable. But I think what we do is we discount the importance of the erotic, sensual, sexual in love feeling, which is just as important. So the key is learning how to stay in love how to fall in love all over again. And there's things that you have to do to be intentional to bring back that feeling while you remain that, while you maintain that caring love in the relationship. And then the third piece is God's agape love. Now, if you know about uh, the book of 1 Corinthians 6 chapter, it talks about all of the attributes that speak to that agape, godly type of love. I encourage you to go and do research for yourself. But it allows you to sustain your relationship, meaning it is the thing that keeps you founded and in that relationship when you reach a rough patch. Because in your relationship, there are going to be seasons of hardship, seasons of struggle, times when you're going to feel like giving up, throwing in the towel, calling it quits, and just doing away with what you've invested all of your years in that relationship uh, forming. But what it is, is when you have that God love within you, it allows you to endure when you're going through trials. It is long suffering, it is patient, it is kind. You know, it keeps no record of wrong. And so what I'm suggesting is, we need to have a perfect balance and blend uh, with all of these three types of love in our relationship so it protects the relationship from the vulnerability of an affair. So to go back to the original question, do you love him? Do you love her? If you're tied up in an affair relationship, the answer, generally speaking, uh, is no. There is not a love, but more of a feeling and an infatuation. And I think a lot of times, a lot of people think they're in love with their affair partner. They think they finally found their soulmate, but they realize, you know what, if I enter into a real relationship with this person, this person may not be the most ideal for me. That is why this person represents what we call the dangerous partner profile. Now, we don't have time to talk about that tonight. We'll do that in another session. But there is a dangerous partner profile that makes this person unfit to be partnered with. And that is why oftentimes when we enter into a fair relationships, most of us never think of making a life partner out of this particular relationship because they don't qualify. The person that we're in a relationship with qualifies for the partnership, but there's something that we feel is lacking and we go out to get what we're not getting you know, within the realm of our own relationship. And so if we truly understand that this is a, fi a fictitious love, it's a love based upon deceit. It's a love based upon a fantasy that never manifests into reality. And if we think about the consequences of our actions, it should pull us back into taking the time to redevelop the in love feeling that we uh, can have, that we once had. Listen, just being transparent, there have been seasons even in my marriage with Danielle where we were in love and then fell out of love because that speaks to the seasons of life. And what came naturally in the beginning of the relationship, you have to now become intentional to do the same things. So what we naturally did, giving gifts to one another, loving one another, spending quality time, having recreational companionship, meeting each other's emotional needs, 
that came easy in the beginning because we both had a desire to please one another and to be with one another. But when you uh, go through a storm, when your partner gets on your nerves, when you can't stand them anymore, when you just want to call it quits, when you'd rather be alone, when you'd rather do life on your own, and now you have to rebuild because there is an aftermath after the storm. Because when the storm comes and the winds blow and it doesn't knock the house down and you still have that structure that you now have to patch up and tweak and repair, this is where the recovery begins. And so it becomes more challenging and more difficult to do what came natural. But if you want to get back to that in love feeling, because if I'm truly in love with you, I don't desire to be with anyone else because I have everything within my relationship that I need to sustain myself. So number one, we must recognize that every single relationship needs a blend of all three. The Eros love, the Phileo love, and the Agape love. So the in love feeling, the caring love that we should have for one another to do our best to kind of please and to accommodate our partner, but then that sustainable love that we have because the love of God lives within us. Now, you can't truly love somebody unless you truly love yourself. You can't know you, you can't love yourself unless you truly know yourself. And you certainly can't know yourself unless you know the God that exists within you. So it all goes back to having a direct vertical relationship with the Father. And when we have that relationship with the Father, it is a template and a floor plan and a model of how we need to have a horizontal relationship with our partner. But also we have to look at the internal relationship. Because if I learn how to love me, if I learn how to value me, then I know how to receive love from someone else. And because I value myself, there's certain things that I'm not going to allow within my relationship. And I'm going to discuss with my partner how I need to be loved. You know, we talk about this in the five love languages, how oftentimes we're loving our partners the way that we want to be loved. But the way that we need to be loved is different than the way our partner needs to be loved. So it's important to learn and to rediscover what your partner needs in meeting their emotional needs and communicating in their love language. So the in love feeling is ultimately there. So just wanted to do a quick video with you. I got to go back to my private marriage, marriage intensive that I'm doing uh, over the next few days that is really powerful. and We're seeing great breakthrough. But I wanted to give you that to think about. So if you are the hurt partner and you're struggling in your mind about this whole notion that your partner fell out of love with you and is in love with another person, which now causes you to constantly compare yourself. What does she have that I don't? What does he do that I don't? I want to free you of that mental torture to let you know that it's not really love. And whatever is missing in your relationship, you can regain it back. But it requires that you're willing to do the work. So I highly encourage you, get the help that you need because doing it on your own may not be enough. You may not have the knowledge, you may not have the skill, you may not have the wherewithal to be able to do it on your own. So seek somebody who is an expert in the things that you need to restore your particular relationship. Listen, if you guys need help, I, can, I encourage you to go to couplesacademy.org. Uh, we do provide one-on-one -on -one sessions for couples uh, that need that assistance. Get the book, The Audacity of Marriage. That's a great first step for those who can't afford counseling. It will give you the blueprint, the floor plan, and everything you need to uh, have a sustainable marriage that grows and continue to tune in if you have any questions inbox me we are here from you we, we would love to hear from you excuse me we're experiencing major breakthrough uh, with many couples as they just tune in on a weekly basis also last but not least if you're not a part of our group the audacity of marriage I encourage you to search out the group on Facebook it will truly be a blessing to you there's so much that we do within that group and I don't want you to miss out on it stay tuned uh, click notification so you can see what we're doing in that group I need you to subscribe to this video and please I know that you're benefiting from this video but if you can share it I encourage all of you that are watching me right now, click the share button, share it on your wall, share it on a friend's wall, because somebody is going through something and they just need this quick word that'll make the difference for them. So I love you all, I appreciate you all, and I will see you next week. Take care.